My name is Pete. I'm teaching you step-by-step step everything you need to know about Excel VLOOKUP in less than 10 minutes. Here's an ID for a product in our coffee business. VLOOKUP can return any of these values associated with that product ID and do so much more. Mastering VLOOKUP can help you get your work done quicker and provide a massive boost in productivity and efficiency. So let's get started right now. Here I have a product ID for our cold brew coffee maker from our e-commerce business. And I wanna find out the price associated with that ID. VLOOKUP can help me do that, and let's walk through the steps. To start, type equal sign, VLOOKUP, and open parentheses. And the first input is the lookup value. This is the value that we want to look up and return its price. In this instance, the lookup value is in cell B7. And I'm gonna click on that cell with my mouse, which populates B7 into the formula, and I'm gonna press comma. The next input is the table array, which is a range of cells, where VLOOKUP is going to search for this lookup value so it can return price. And to populate table array, I'm gonna click over to the first cell of our table, and I'm gonna press and hold the control and the shift key. And then I'm gonna press the right arrow to select all the cells to the right, and the down arrow to select all the cells down in our table. And I'm gonna press comma. Next is the column index number, which is the column number, starting with one, that contains the return value. And VLOOKUP will return this column when it finds the lookup value. Price is in the third column, so I'm gonna click three and press comma. <laughs> Lastly is the range lookup. And we're going to type false for now, which means the VLOOKUP is gonna look for the exact string of characters specified in the lookup value. And we'll come back to the range lookup argument later in this video to show some different use cases. Lastly, type a close parentheses and and press enter. And you'll see that the VLOOKUP returned a dollar amount, which is the price associated with the cold brew product ID. So let's recap what we just did. First, we specified the lookup value, and this is the value that you want to look up and return information about. Next, we specified the table array, which is the range of cells where VLOOKUP will search for the lookup value and the return value. Then we specified the column index number, which is the column number that contains the return value. And we said false for range lookup, which we'll come back to later in this video. I wanna quickly call out that in the description of this video, there's a link to the exact practice workbook that I'm using right now. It contains the VLOOKUP examples that we're reviewing, the overview of the VLOOKUP arguments, and the best practices and common pitfalls with VLOOKUP. It also contains sample data that you can use to practice and improve. The best part is that it's based on the web, so you can save a version to your OneDrive or download onto your PC and instantly have your own copy. Check out this great resource, especially if you want to follow along, and let's get back to it. Now that we've run through a VLOOKUP and explained its syntax, let's discuss a couple of best practices. To enter a VLOOKUP formula quickly, press equal sign and start typing VLOOKUP, and when you see the name populated down here, press the tab key. The tab key completes the formula name and get you started with an open parentheses. When you highlight the table array, pay close attention to the small numbers in the lower right-hand corner of the selection. These numbers count the number of columns in your table array. They can be super helpful when you're highlighting a large number of columns for your table array. For example, here, customer ID is the fourth column in the table array, and I'll remember that when I have to enter a column index number in the next argument. Here we have a VLOOKUP without any absolute references. And when I drag this formula to the right, you see that the formula generates a pound and A error. And when I expect the formula, the table array has has shifted to the right. And using this formula that I just dragged to the right is either gonna give you an error or inaccurate results. Instead, you should use absolute references on your table array so it stays the same no matter where you drag your VLOOKUP. To do that, I'm gonna highlight the table array in the original formula and click F4 once and then press enter. And now when I drag this formula to the right, you see that the table array remains the same and the formula returns correct results. It's important to note that VLOOKUP only returns the first instance of your lookup value in the table array. For example, this VLOOKUP returns the customer Publix, even though there's an instance of the customer Walmart and farmer's market for this same item ID below. So it's important that you understand your data and recognize that VLOOKUP only returns information about the first instance of your lookup value in the table array. You can use wildcards to match different sequences of characters in your lookup value. Here's a VLOOKUP searching for the phrase cold and then any two characters after. And because of those two question marks, VLOOKUP is going to scan the table array for 
any value starting with cold and return the first one. Similarly, an asterisk matches any sequence of characters. For example, here's a VLOOKUP searching for FIL asterisk, and the VLOOKUP will return the first value starting with FIL and any sequence of characters after. Wildcard characters are good tools when you have an idea of what you're looking up, but don't know the exact value. Let's run through the common problems with VLOOKUP and how to fix them. I do have an entire video dedicated to fixing VLOOKUP mistakes, and I'll link to to that video somewhere on the screen. The pound NA error can indicate that the lookup value is not in the table array. In this example, we're searching for target in the table array, and you can see that target is not listed in our list of customers, which is why the VLOOKUP is returning a pound NA. We can wrap the VLOOKUP in an if error statement to return a more clear message other than pound NA. So I'm gonna press F2 to enter the formula, put my mouse cursor to the front of VLOOKUP, and type if error. And then I'll click to the end of the formula. You can also press the end key to jump there quickly. Press comma and type missing customer in quotation. This means that the formula is going to return missing customer instead of pound NA. Close parentheses and press enter. And you see that instead of pound NA, the formula returns missing customer, which is a much cleaner way to do your VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP only works left to right. And when the lookup value is in the first column, of the table array. Here is a view lookup, and you can see that Amazon is in the table array, but it's in the second column of the table array, so the formula is returning a pound NA. When you adjust the table array so that Amazon's in the first column and press enter, the formula works as expected. Here we have a view lookup trying to work from right to left and is trying to return the item for a given item ID. I'm gonna move the item ID to the left of the item column by highlighting the column, pressing shift and dragging it to the left. And when I update my table array and press enter, the formula works as expected. So make sure the VLOOKUP is working from left to right, and the lookup value is in the leftmost column of the table array. If the column index number is less than one or contains text, then you'll get the hash value error. When I change the column index number to the number two and press enter, the formula works as expected. If the column index number is greater than the total number of columns in the table array, then you'll get a pound ref error. Here, we want to return the third column of a two column data set, and it's returning a hash ref error. When I expand the table array to be three columns, and press enter, the formula works as expected. The pound name error usually means that the lookup value is missing quotations. When I wrap this customer ID in quotes and press enter, the formula works as expected. I said we would run through a VLOOKUP where the range lookup is set to true. So let's do that right now. When you use true as a range lookup or an approximate match, VLOOKUP assumes the first column in the table array is sorted, either numerically or alphabetically. And then VLOOKUP searches for the closest value. As an example, we have a list of customers in their annual revenue, and we wanna categorize the customers based on their sales. Annual revenue between 10,000 and 25,000 is a small customer. Sales between 25,000 and 40,000 are a medium customer, and sales greater than 40,000 are a large customer. <laughs> So I'm gonna start a VLOOKUP and my lookup value is gonna be the annual revenue. My table array is gonna be this table over here. And I'm gonna wrap that table array in an absolute reference by pressing F4. The column index is two and the range lookup is true. And now when I drag this formula down, you see that VLOOKUP has appropriately categorized the customers based on their sales. But remember, when using a range lookup of true, the table array must be sorted either numerically or alphabetically. So when I introduce a new category of tiny and make the revenue threshold 1,000, when I press enter, you'll see that the VLOOKUP is now inaccurately categorizing customers because the lookup array is not sorted numerically. Always make sure your table array is sorted either numerically or alphabetically when you have a range lookup of true, otherwise you're gonna get some funky results like we have right here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Click that subscribe and notification bell so we can stay in touch. Let me know in the comments, why are you learning VLOOKUP? If you learned something, press thumbs up and I will see you next time.